Yeah. Is that it? That is it, uh, man. Are we, are we live? We Well, it's not live, but we are doing it. <laughs> Ooh, but we are alive right now, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, Stefan, man, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for flying out to cold Vancouver. It's not that cold, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out freezing bad. out here, man. No. I'm freezing, but um, welcome to the first episode. This is the Triple M Podcast. What does that stand for, SB? Mind. No, it's uh, money. <laughs> Mind. <laughs> what is it again? <laughs> Bro, we uh, didn't even talk about this. No, but it is... Uh, the money mind mastery. Money mind mastery. At first, it was millionaire mind mastery, but we will maybe we'll change it when we get to a million. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll, we'll give it like what? Good six, eight months. A good six to eight weeks. Right? Start steamrolling <laughs> these deals. You know, who knows, man? Who knows where this is gonna take us? But that's um, what we do. That that is what we do. And and, and what's the main? Why, why are we even doing this, Stefan? I just want to make a difference. And that's why I want to do this. Uh, you and I, we are both in the sales industry, and we all know that's just more than more than the job uh, for you to be able to be successful in our, in our role we do have to actually you know you, you got to live it and that's what we're doing and that's why we were making this podcast all you know, day man all day man. and when you say live it what do you mean by live it man living what you're doing like be be the sales guy right you can't just be become you, you can't just have that as a job yeah you gotta true. do it as you and that's that's what i've been doing i mean my whole life i've been selling um, but that's what I found, you know, when I st- uh, first started, uh, just to give you a little bit of the, my background, Ooh, in we go, sales. we're going deep into this, huh? <laughs> we're going deep. Let's hear it. <laughs> it's weird. Cause this is how we met through this. And, and this is why we're yep. doing this. Yeah, it's true, man. It's true. Um, Let's hear it. But yeah, I know at first, you, you know, people think about sales is just for them. It's hard. Yeah. Right? It's like, but I guess that's an old school way of thinking when people are, you're trying to sell something for you, you, you for people, it's cold calling. Yep. That's what they, they think of, cold yeah. calling or uh, it used to be door to door, but you can't do that Good anymore days. with COVID. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, those are, I mean, th- those aren't easy. Don't get me wrong. Um, but that's the one that builds your character, right? Yeah. Hearing the no's, the rejection, it yeah. hurts. It does. I've heard that a lot. I, I still keep hearing it, but yeah, that's part of the job. And that's actually what makes, I think, you know, it builds your character. It does. It does. You know, he, like like you said, man, hearing no countless times, whether it be from a prospect, mm-hmm. and the biggest thing for you know a lot of people is, uh, you know, for a lot of men is women. You know, hearing it from I mean, women. <laughs> I'm not. <gonna> say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for a lot of men. <laughs> yeah, for for a lot of men, and and, and for you, because like, look, you're you're already married. Yeah. You, know, you don't you don't have to encounter that no more. So you 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 pass that level. Encounter. You know, for me, I'm I, I just got recently engaged. Congratulations! So, you know, I'm, I'm I'm almost at that level. You know, which is good. So, but I don't have to search no more. I nope. don't have to leave, nope. keep prospecting at the nope. at the local bars, clubs, or wherever you meet women these days, <laughs> right? But it's true, man. You you need to build character if you want to be like a really good salespeople, and like in our role today, like the the biggest thing that we see is that for the people that underperform. Mm-hmm. It's most the way that they do their job is most likely how they do everything. Everything, you know. We, we spoke about this the other day. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to throw shade. No, people, they, but like, but someone, <laughs> someone yeah. is. Come on, bro. So, there's, so, there's this one person, and it's not. It's not necessarily like at this shop, but in every in any other job that you like, yeah. you're in. If you look at the people that were underperforming, the the biggest like common. Thing, the most common trait between all of them is that a lot of the times they're depressed or just sad people. Yeah. You know, like me and you, we're, we're, we, we just fuck around the whole... I mean, that's swear. Fuck it. I'm trying to get monetized. <laughs> yeah. Freak it. <laughs> freak, freak it, mate. Right? But like between... With, like, with me and you, we're just, we're just happy people. Yeah. We're... Well, I like to think that people like to be around us, you know? Where's the other people? But yeah, well, if yeah. we got our guests, we'll ask them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But you just have to you just have to be that person that other people want to kind of be around. And you that's know, and, and like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you heard the term before, people buy from people what that they like. They, they like. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if we were in the old days and we did go door, uh, like door-to-door sales... Dude, we'd be we'd be closing deals left, right, and center. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to brag, but I just, I just feel that we would be able to do that job successfully, even though I've never yeah. done anything like that before. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's true. It's, it's very true. It's very true. And for someone, and how long have you been in sales for? 
Uh, so, well, I graduated 2017, so just pretty new. I'd say so I'm still in my 18, 19, five. 20, that's, yeah. uh, see, that's why we're not, we don't do math. That's why we're not engineers. That's why we're in sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We didn't live the Filipino <laughs> dream, you know? <laughs> see, that's so, five years. <laughs> five years, oh my God. Okay, sold up. So let's, let's 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 dig a little bit deeper into into good old Stefan, because like you know, like I've only known you what for six months, yeah. and we're doing some crazy shit now, which is good, right? That's so you've been good, in man. sales for five for five years. Yep. Um, right now, you're selling heavy equipment. Perfect. Before that, what were you doing? Just cars, man. Good old car sales. Car sales. You yeah. were, were you like um, what were you selling? What what car? What kind of cars? <laughs> so I I, I went uh, I sold Hondas. That's my very first job. Uh, well, not first, first really sales job I did, and then I went to Toyota, and then Subaru. Okay, so uh, Honda, Toyota, Subaru, mm -hmm. and it, it, it was all strictly commission paid. Commission right? based, man. You don't make anything, you make nothing. Damn. I mean, you don't sell anything, you make nothing. And how how was the first like few years when you were in it? Oh, it was struggle, of course. Um, it, especially well, I started in Honda. I, that's the time where you can actually. It was easier to sell because you can sell a car and then you, you get the, the new car in like two days. And like yeah. now you wait, what, You're six, eight while. months? Yeah. Um, but at, of course, if, when you start, I was the same. I had this struggle where I'm like, damn, why am I doing this? Especially yeah. when you're, commission, you're all commission. Yeah. And you, like I said, if you don't sell, you don't make nothing. You're not eating. No. Yeah. I mean, a good thing I was still living with my mom at the time. So yeah. I had, that's, I, I had the, that's why I had the balls to do it, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, at that point, I, I just didn't. I just wanted a job. Of course, and that's the, the easiest job to get is in uh, car sales because, it's, like I said, no one wants to do it. Yeah, because right? it's commission only. You know, like now the good thing about car sales, well, pretty much sales is it's it's high reward, high risk, high reward. It's true. You don't sell, they get rid of you right away. You sell, you make a lot of money. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, my first couple of months, I was. It was, I'd say it was a struggle. Um, very main thing about selling, though, is product knowledge. Um, of course. So you have to really know the cars inside and out, would yes. you say? Yeah. At first, that's all I focused on. Yeah. Uh, which we'll get to tackle on, you know, once you actually get to selling, it's not what you know. It's how you, you know, it's how you really relay what you know, even right. though you don't know a lot, right? Yeah. It's how you execute it. Right. But I was focused on really knowing what it is. Like, I need to know the diameter of... <laughs> the radius of the this is the wheelbase it's yeah, 14 like, inches I, and i knew all that <laughs> yeah but i wasn't selling yeah so i'm like why right because i'm like this the honda crv has a 0.98 you know you know like wheelbase or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but i knew all those numbers but to me i've never <laughs> i've tr i've tried telling that to the customer but to them they're like bro they don't care what's this yeah it's four wheels and it drives that's all they yeah right and th that's when i found out i'm like bro you just make it simple, and that's that's I've I've used that a lot. Yeah, and I guess that's that really helped me is because you just gotta talk like how you talk to your friend, right? Like how we're talking make right it now. easier. Yeah, make it easier for them to understand. It's like, true. The wheelbase is high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it won't go through snow. Yeah. Rather than saying it's point nine nine inches, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like being specific, because they're like. That doesn't mean anything rather than you saying, hey, it, the snow won't hit it, right? You, exactly. You're, you're going to show the value to them, you know, because exactly. like, instead of just being like, like talking in very scientific terms where they're like, how does this apply to me? Exactly. Just make it simple for them, right? Which is, which is very good, which a lot of people don't, which a lot of people fail to understand, mm -hmm. right? They, they start talking to them in their own lingo. Yeah. And like, whether it be like finance lingo or yep. like the auto industry lingo, and they're like, how does this apply to me? No. And then, all those walk-ins are walk-outs with nothing in their hands, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's true, man. It's That's true. A good one. It's very true. So, so, the, so within the first few years, you really brushed up on product knowledge, which is good. You yeah. know, everyone needs to do that yeah. in the very beginning, right? Then you started getting your hands dirty, started trying to focus on closing more deals, and you didn't really see much action until you started sim simplifying the process. Yeah. Is that correct? That, that is exactly what it was. It's Like I said, it's... Focusing more on actually catering it to the customer or the guy, you know, your client rather than trying to say, trying to give them all that you know. Yeah, knowledge. that's true. That's true. Now, you know, being in a commission based only role and you had to probably not 100% rely on just walk ins. 
Yeah. What were some like tactics that you would do to like really get your name out there? Mm. Uh, well, are you talking about now or at the time when I was still at the time when you're doing time, auto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, I just did a lot of cold calling. I Damn. hated it. So, 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 would you go through like the whole database and just call uh, them? Yeah, usually, uh, of course. At that, at the time though, I was with a new dealership. Right. Oh. Like the dealership just opened. It was what seven months in. Yeah. Um. So my book was well, the whole dealership's book wasn't even that much. Damn. But that's all I had to do uh, is I, you know, I started cold calling people. Yeah. Um, but the good thing is, like I said, at the time, there's cars are available. So people were coming in. That's good. So we, we, I still had, I built my book pretty quick, I'd say. Yeah. Um, I didn't close much. Pretty much the same because at least for you to hit target, you need at least 10 cars. And it's hard for a new dealership because... It's new. It's new. No, 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 not many people know about you guys. Right? Exactly. Especially in Calgary, there's uh, eight Honda dealerships, or probably more now, wow. but eight at the time. Yeah. And we're the eighth. So it's there's like the established dealer that have their, you know, that have their own book. They're the client. They're, 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 their they're clientele. Loyal clientele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So with your with 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 your clientele, <laughs> were they were there a lot of Filipinos? Were you known as the Filipino guy or what? Yeah, I'd say I closed a couple of titos and titas there. That, <laughs> yeah. That's number one because Honda is a Filipino car. Oh, 100%. They love um, that stuff. Man. And when I went to Toyota, actually even the Subaru. But it, it, it is, I'd say it's easier at that point. To um, close Filipinos? Just because you have something in common. And that's where we go into sales again. You got to find that common ground. Yeah. By the time they I walk in, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. By the time they walk in and they see my beautiful ass face, yeah. their guard is already down. Right? Exactly. I'm assuming so. Be- beautiful eyes. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Tito. And then that's it, bro. That's all you have to say. Okay, so now let me ask you this because I, I do the same thing with like when I encounter like older Filipino mm-hmm. people. You know how we're talking right now is very like proper. Yeah. Right? And then once like an, a tita, tita or Tito comes in, we start talking to them and they're having a hard time really understanding what we're saying. Do you ever just slip in the accent? Yes, of course. So like Tita, you know, to go to, to, to make things simple... <laughs> You have to talk like this, and they seem to understand that shit right away. And they find it funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They find it funny, and they're like, because they, they know exactly what they're saying. Exactly. And, and and see, you're using that, and that's not just with sales. Yeah. They understood you well. Let's assume you were in the party with, you know, Filipino party, and they yeah. understood you right away. So that's the same thing as when I'm talking to sales, that you made them comfortable. Yeah, no, and, exactly. And that's what it is. Um, it, that's to a point where... That's where I learned because I had the product knowledge, but I was I was having a hard time finding that common ground or making them comfortable. Yeah, that's my very first struggle, and I think that's normal because it is. I've never done this. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I've focused on just knowing what I'm selling, but I I forgot about who I'm selling to. Right, and that's, that's true. I for me personally, because I that's where I found success is. Man, it's good to know what you're selling, but it's it's better to know who you're selling to, and that's where you cater everything to them. Of course, um, and that's that's how you close the deal. That's pretty much it. And that, that's exactly it. And that's also beneficial for them. Uh, f- my number one rule is I don't sell to someone that I know that the product or whatever I'm selling to won't benefit them. Yes, yeah. I always look at it as a win-win situation. If I if I'm done my prospecting and I think you don't qualify for it then i'm not gonna sell it to you i'm no. gonna tell you straight up i'm like it's gonna be bad go back go to the other you know spot where you can get a better whatever it is that you need right yeah because it's just bad business if you put them in like a really really bad deal spot. yeah right because like who knows if you just go way over on like on your fee or whatever you do in auto and six months later they're like complaining about the payments and then they go back to you and like step on man you put me to this bad deal <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so it's, 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 it never, it it's, it's never good. So never good. to take a step back here, so you were in sales for five years, mm-hmm. man, all commission-based only. Yep. I would kind of go crazy because, like, number one, you're commission only. Yep. Some months, probably in, like, the slower season, what, January? Would, would it be slow around January? Well, Sometimes? at the time, all months were slow for me, bro. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I wasn't eating, bro. I wasn't eating at all. I was only, yeah. There there are slower months. Although, yeah. like I said, when I was doing it, every, every, <laughs> every month, was, month slow, was slow. Especially with our new dealership, right? Yeah. So, so, it, so even with slow months, you know, that would, I, I would assume... Well, I know it would take a huge toll on your on your mind, mm-hmm. right? Number one, you're not closing any deals, mm-hmm. you're not bringing any money in. Nope. So you start what having self doubt. Yep. 
was there other things that were going through your mind like mentally that like messed you up uh, not really messed me up but it changed my perspective because I was like why am I doing this yeah and especially with car sales it's really it's really tiring because you're there 24 7 pretty much you don't have you, any you get a hours. schedule but your busiest day is a Saturday so guess what Saturday you and the dealership selling you, you I mean you can go on vacation but if you're 100 percent commission why would you if the busiest day That's is true. Saturday yeah and after work yeah right so five, for a lot whatever. of people yeah so they go in yeah even if you're scheduled let's say the worst schedule is like on a Tuesday at like nine to three because no one's there no one's there yeah and then when you leave at three everyone's there <laughs> yeah so guess what you're staying from nine to like six seven and that's Monday to Friday damn right that's long uh, you, hours. you usually get a day off within a week yeah cool you get a day off within a week and then Saturday, you're there all day. All there. Sunday, you're closed. So you get Sunday off for sure. Yeah. But it takes a lot because once you close a deal and they schedule a delivery on your day off, you have to which go. happens a lot, Yeah. you have to go. You have to go. So you once you to. go, you're all dressed up. Guess what you're going to do after your delivery? Just work. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just work. You're already you're there. You're not going to go home. You yeah. Know? You, let's why. say your delivery is going to and there's a customer that walks in. What you're going to do? Yeah. You got to sell. You got to sell. You might as well. So you're already it, there. At, see, at that point, I was doing that. I yeah. was working. I wasn't closing. <laughs> so you just look. You 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 were just. Looking I was just busy, existing in the. <laughs> bro, I was I was getting ready to fire. Bro. I was, they were gonna fire my ass because I wasn't selling, right? Yeah. Um. So that's that. That was it. It, it was really a struggle, and I, I did I have self doubt? I don't think I didn't yet. Yeah. Because, I can always say I was new, uh, but at the time I didn't know what I was gonna do. I'm like. Am I going to continue sales? If I can't do this, how can I continue on with this career? Yeah. And I've always known as a high reward when you're successful, but I was at I was on the other end where it's high risk, <laughs> yeah, high no, risk no, no, reward. no reward, bro. That was really it. Yeah. Um, I was I I got away with it because at that point I was like, man, this ain't it. So I just started looking for a job. Right then and there, you're just like screw it. I, I just started applying. Eat. Yeah. yeah, and that's how I got it to Toyota, where I got my new job as selling, it, which is weird. And that's where I actually, it's weird because I had to move dealerships just to, I'd say, just to get that you know rookie season off. Like after that rookie season, you'll be more comfortable. I was looking for a different job. I couldn't find one. Yeah, and like, like in the same industry or like- yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, I was like, I'm done with sales. Oh, damn. but I couldn't find a job for a long ass time because I was newly grad. And I okay, background. I actually finished uh, criminal justice. Yeah, I, I, my ass wanted to be a cop. Damn. So, uh, but to be a cop, well, more they're more favorable towards uh, they they look at maturity. At the time, I was twenty year, twenty one, twenty two. Right. And they look at life experience. I was twenty one, twenty two. <laughs> yeah. I don't got none of that. Yeah, exactly. So You're I'm so like, green. Bro, I would just work. Yeah. Right. So when I started working, I got into the sales job because it's the easiest one to get. Right. Yeah. And when I tried looking for an actual job, like let's say within law enforcement, it was it was it was tough. It was hard. Especially because at a, at a young age. Yeah. At a young age, yeah. So I just started applying, and there's a lot of sales opportunities. So yeah. I, every now and then, I throw that resume in. <laughs> But all the calls I'm getting were for, from dealerships because that's already my background. Yeah, and that's how I got. I, I, that's how I got my my next job, which is in Toyota. At, at Toyota. Yeah. And do you, even so, at Toyota, did you have like a mentor at all? Um, they like to say they are, but it's usually the managers, right? Yeah. Um, essentially, what it was when you're uh, you're when you're on probation, I'd say, or when you just started. Yeah. The manager is usually the one that closes, right? So you basically set the deal up and then they're the ones that close it? Yeah. Um, my first couple of deals, it was just the manager. So when they're like, good job. Like, I didn't do nothing because you did. The thing is, they you control the pricing, right? Right. Um, all you have to do as a salesman in the dealership is to go, so you go show them the price. Yeah. You cool with that? Never cool with that. <laughs> so you go back. Yeah. Hey, they're not cool with it. And they're like, okay, do this. And then you sell it. You cool with that? Hell no. They go back. They're not cool with this. And then the manager comes in. Okay, now let's close the deal. It's always like that. Is it always like that? I, I, 
at when I was started, when when I started, yes, that's yeah. all we did. Um, but as I grew in like to the role, I I, I stopped doing this because every time you leave, yeah, you lose credibility, right? That's true. They're like this guy can't get the I'm job just, done. Here, Screw this Stefan guy. Here, right? Here's the number. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. Wait a second, <laughs> yeah. uh, boss. Yeah. Boss can man, you please boss change man. the number. Yeah, yeah. See that you just lose credibility, right? Because you can That's just true. keep doing that until it goes to zero dollars per month. Yeah. Um, but that that's how it starts, and that. But then then. That's when I learned how to just. That's when I kind of learned how to close because I'm like, no, this is it. Yeah. Um, and that's where you just. Oh, I don't want to get too, too specific, but that's how. That's what uh, gave me the confidence. Yeah. I'd say to to become a closer. Yeah. And Toyota really well, I, I'd say changed my life, but I guess that's that just it, it like put me in the next level. Right. Um, and that's where I where I was like, okay, I can do this as a career. Yeah. Um and. That's pretty much it, man. And I That's just kept doing it until I, until I was, I was, I wasn't saying I'm the best, but I was, I was living. Exactly, you I were was, just <laughs> existing anymore, <anyway. laughs> right? It's not the, it's not the highest reward, but I was almost there. I'd say, yeah. I'd say, at, at least there's a reward. Is exactly. What I'm That's yeah, because yeah, before you were getting nothing. No, nothing bro. at all. That's why I was like, man. Can you please can you spot me when yeah, <laughs> you right. me to go out? You want to go you, halves? You want to eat? Got you next week though, right? You know, eat where, man? I don't yeah. money. <laughs> so, Damn, man. So that's good, man. So like, yeah. it was it was just a lot of would you say just getting your hands dirty and just getting the job done? A lot of that, but it's also a lot of it's your mindset. Yeah. Um, I wanted to at after Honda, I was like, I was I was so sad. Like, I was like, bro, I don't know if I can do this. But at that point, I couldn't find a job. So you're like, there was, so your your back was against the wall, basically. Yeah, exactly. So now we're never. I, I think it, it worked to my advantage because I'm like, bro, I have no choice. Yeah. This, it's only all sales position that's actually willing to take me because I have no experience. Yeah. Even though I sucked at my old on the job. <laughs> yeah. They're still willing to. They don't have to know that, but they're still willing to take me, right? True. So I'm like, why don't I give it another try? And that's that's when you know. It it kind of. It's when you really catapulted yourself forward. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's not like I'm Elon Musk or Grant Cardone and stuff, but <laughs> it helped me. Exactly. And I, 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 it's not just financially, you know. You know, talking to people now, I'm more confident. Um, just finding, you know, building rapport with people. Yeah. Get you know, getting to know their sweet spot, getting to know their what they're comfortable with, you know, and right. tailoring it to that. And that's and, and that's again, that's not just in my job but it's also in life yeah you know um when you're trying to help people you got to find that common ground so they're more comfortable they're more open so you can do what you know you can do you can help them with what they need kind of thing true. So that's, that's true so now i guess that's a perfect segue to get into the next conversation here um were you always a very outgoing person or were you like kind of i'm i'm a different i, I want to say I'm, oh, I'm 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 outgoing yeah um i can be i choose who i am outgoing with. like if i don't mess with you bro <laughs> bro you ain't gonna hear me yeah, and right. that's what it is i ain't gonna bang your phone bro you know? that's what it is though <laughs> yeah um unless i'm at work then i got no choice but to talk to your ass but like when like let's say we're at a party yeah and, and that, this is the, this is just my personality and i'm not trying to be mean and like and I don't, if I don't really mess with you, bro, you ain't going to hear me at all. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you. So I don't know if they, I don't know if that's an introverted or an extroverted, um, trait, right? Yeah. If I choose who I'm going to talk to, am I an introvert or an extrovert? But when I talk to you though, I'm all, I'm all, you're all ears and I'm, and I'm open up, you know, I can hold a conversation and stuff, but if I don't mess with you, bro, you ain't going to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna hear me talk at all. Bro, hey, hold on. Let's, let's, let's open that. Up, let's open that up a little bit. Yeah. What do you mean by not mess with you? Like I don't like you at all. Like mm, is it because uh, I did you wrong or what? No, what it's not it? like it's. Of course, if I don't like you, I'm, I don't. I'm not gonna of talk course. to you. But yeah. it's like when I don't feel like talking to you, like when I see you at a corner, like it's just fucking Marvin. I don't want to talk to, I don't right talk to Marvin. <laughs> yeah. You know, then I'm not gonna talk to you. Yeah. Uh, unlike because me, my, I mean, she, she's in sales too, but she is very outgoing. Like she gets, she can go in a room and just own it. Basically, and that's exactly what she does. Like she goes in, she talks to every single one, even a little kid. Yeah, I don't do that. I talk to like two people in that room, <laughs> and so, those are the two people you're talking to. But I'm night. talking to them all day. Exactly. I know they're yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be in their house the next day. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it is. I think. I think so. Honestly, like I'm the same way as well. So. I can be extroverted when I need to. Yeah, but I don't know if you're the same way. But like, 
I prefer to be just at home doing nothing at all. Well, not doing nothing at all, but just at home, not talking to anyone. That's exactly me. Right. But yeah. when I have to be extroverted, okay, fine. I'll, I'll fucking, I'll, yeah. I'll talk to a few people yeah. for a little yeah. bit. Right. But then after like a few hours, I'm like, see, that's why do you, that's why the, which ask, do you classify yourself as an introvert or an extrovert at that point? I would say, hybrid. I would say I, I, yeah, exactly. I would say hybrid, <laughs> but for the most You're part, I would hybrid. say introverted, but I can be extroverted when I need to be, Yeah, you know, okay, like when fair. it's, when it's like time to roll and get down, all right, I'll, I'll talk to a few people. <laughs> But I prefer to just stay at home and just be and just be by myself, you know. I prefer not messing with people. That's the thing. But I <laughs> so, can. So we, we so, don't mess with people. Is that which no, no, no. Which <laughs> which, uh, which brings it to another question, though. Is it because you've been in sales, that's why you're like that, or is that just how you are? Bro, if I'm being honest, I think it's just dealing with a lot of stupidity day to day. You know. So it's dealing with stupid people. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to, not to take it to that extent, but yes and no. Yeah. Cause some of the questions, well, obviously if, if, if you've been in a role for more than two years, you're going to get the same objections over yeah. and over and over again. Right. At first it's going to be like, Oh fuck, here we go. Now this is, this is, this yeah, is new yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, right. Yeah. But now that like we were so accustomed to it, yeah. we hear this objection, we handle it this way. Yeah. Okay. We're going down this way. Yeah. It's like, it's autopilot. Right. So in my mind now, it's like, <laughs> are you, are you, like I'm thinking, like, are you really asking me this question, right? But like to to, to an outside person, they're like, he's just it's, asking. It's a, a valid person. question. Yeah, it's very yes. valid. But then it's just like, <sighs> gotta take a deep breath before I lose my mind, you know? And 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 and, and, and I guess that's why like I enjoy boxing so much. Yeah. Because like it just gets my mind off that like common, not common, but like the stupidity that we go through day okay. to day, you know? That's. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, it's funny because I, I, we do the same, we pretty much do the same thing and I get what you're saying. Right? Talking to the people every day is get really exhausting. Uh, yeah. Especially in our line of work where, you know, where we work. So it is funny. It is it funny. Is. You know what? Enough about me, man. All right. All right. Okay. Let's talk about you and your background. How did this all started? How did we end up um, the same company selling? In the same so company. Walk, w- walk me through before, before we, uh, before we, collide or before we, uh, what do you call that? Uh, before the worlds collided. Um, so how did we meet? No, bef- before our worlds collided. Oh, what before, were you doing? Bef- okay. Walk me through, because I walked, well, kind of walked through my experience here. I know we're doing this, um, and we know that our common ground here is sales and uh, how we are connecting it. Really, how you go about everything is how you do. Everything. Everything, yeah. Exactly. So essentially, what, you know, walk me through your experience. Walk oh, us through. Oh, through sales. Okay, here yes, we go. Yes, how you got into the, your career path. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring you back way, way back. Yeah, All right? Baby, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, you know that song, bro? <laughs> of course I know Woo-hoo! that song. Come on, man. Uh, so okay. I'm going to take it way back, man. Way, way back. So when I first got my job, how, wait, what's the legal age to work in Calgary? Do you remember? 14, I 14? Think. 14. Because I think I got my first job at um, at 15. 15. At 15 okay. years old. It was at a grocery store, grocery store named Save On Foods. Do you have that in Save yeah, On? Yeah, I mean, in, in Calgary? Yeah. We don't live in the boonies, bro. We <laughs> yeah, live exactly. in the city too, bro. Right? Yes, we do. So that was my very first job at okay. 15. Okay, I was a young Marvy, green to the working community. I had no idea. I had no idea of the value of money. Okay, so I worked okay. as a stock boy for a good uh, two weeks, and I got fired. What'd you do, man? <laughs> Come on! So I got fired in two weeks. Okay, and here's how I got fired. So you know, um, in some places you clock in and clock out when you go for break or when you go into work and whatnot, right? Most so I clock in for work. Uh-huh. I go on my 15 minute break. Okay. I'm wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. You clocked in for work. And you went on your 15 no, no, minute okay. break? So I clocked in for, I clocked in for work. I did my okay, two okay. hours. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to be like, okay, that's why you got fired, <laughs> dog. Imagine, man. I, knowing me, I'd probably do that too anyways. But <laughs> I digress. So I clock in for work. I do my however many hours before I get my first 15, right? Uh-huh. So I go for my 15 minute break. Mm-hmm. I'm following my coworkers who've been there for like a year, six months, uh-huh. whatever. So it's past 15 minutes. 
I'm like, oh, I gotta go back to work. Like, no, 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 just hang out for a little bit, man. And I'm like, are you sure? But like, we have to clock in. Do what we do. So, so what they do is they clock in, clock back into work. And then go back. And go back into the lunchroom. So I followed them. I did the exact same thing. But at the same time, in my mind, I'm like, if they do it, if they do it, they won't get fired because they're not on probation. I am. Okay. So I did the right thing. I stayed with them. I hung out for a little bit longer. <laughs> And then I go into work the next day and the manager calls me to the office. Hey, Marvin, we're going to have to let go of you. I'm like, what I do? What? Time fraud. <laughs> Bro, I thought I was going to go to jail at 15 years old, <laughs> man. Time fraud? <laughs> right? I st- Bro, that sounds like a serious <laughs> yeah, felony exactly. right there. Yeah. I stole 10 minutes of Save On Foods time. And I got and I got fired, right? Anyways, that's like that was like my very first job experience, right? But then from there, I worked. You became a good sales. <laughs> I experienced adversity at a very young age. You know, now I know <laughs> what Bars. my parents went through, right? They came all the way to the Philippines for me to commit time fraud. You know, ten minutes of save on foods. Yeah. You imagine you're uh, you know, what do you call that? You're, you're when you get arrested, you're uh, when you take a picture. Oh my, what do you call that? Your my, my mugshot. My mugshot. <laughs> Ten <Time> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was wild. But, but when my parents heard that, they were pissed. So they went into the store, made a huge commotion, whatever. So then, because um, like I think when you have a job, it shows on your like your employment record that you were terminated or whatever. I can't remember. I yeah, it's something a like that. But story. like they they got it like removed to like from, okay. from fired to terminated or whatever. I can't remember. It's the same thing. Same, same, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Right. So from Save On Foods, and I, I shit you not, from like from fifteen until the age I am now, I had over like I'd say fifty jobs. Damn. Right, and my parents think of that as a bad thing. Yep. Yep. Right? I know exactly what Typical you Typical Filipino. Yep. How come you're always jumping from job to job? No one is going to hire you, right? You've been in the same job for 50 years. Yeah, exactly. But in my mind, it's like, I'm not going to stay at a job I don't like. If yep. they're not paying me enough, I'm getting out of there. That's that Western mindset exactly, right Exactly, <laughs> right? And like, because like the old school mentality is you got to stay at one job, work your way up, yep. and be the, the CEO of whatever it is. Yep. Well, that's not going to happen, right? But you want to make your way up the ranks, mm-hmm. right? But in this day and age, that's not going to happen. You have to like get your experience here. Once you have enough experience, leave, whatever, yep. right? But my the, the first time that I got into sales was very, oh, I wouldn't say very different, but I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, this is right? Same boat. And this was back in like, I would say 2012, like a year after me graduating, my parents were like, I'm not go go be a nurse, yeah. be a nurse, go study engineer, do just, just, do you see your, do you see your Kuya J? Engineer. Everyone, you have a Kuya J? God, everyone has a Kuya J. <laughs> right? Everyone has that, How about right? a Tito boy? Oh, 100%, bro. <laughs> Tita baby? Tito. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's my Nina now. My there Nina you go. Baby, bro. There you go, man. See, we got, we're, we're, we're more alike, bro. Right? Our, our family, for all we know, we could be cousins, bro. We could be like your seven Your Tita cousins, is my Nina. I'm done. Right? I'm gonna lie. But the way that I got into sales was very different. Well, I guess it wouldn't be different because like, I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't want to be a cleaner. I didn't want to uh-huh. do any of the traditional Filipino stuff. I yep. wanted to go against the grain. So I'm like, fuck. Uh, frig. I'm going to go on YouTube and search highest paying jobs with no degree. You see a whole bunch of stuff about like, um, like uh, what do you call that? Like freelancing and all that yeah, stuff, yeah. right? And then I came across the Grant Cardone video. <laughs> this is back in 2012, right? When I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I saw his videos about 10Xing, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm a hard worker. 10X that. 10X right? I can 10X anything, yeah, right? Yeah. So then I started thinking about what I'm good at and what services I could sell. I was I was really really big into videography and, ph- and photography yeah. back then, so I'm like, damn! And this is when the real estate uh, real estate market was popping. I'm like, I'll just take photos of houses. I can do that. I don't even know how to take pictures of houses, but I'm just like, screw it, I'll learn. Yeah. Right. So I literally watched a whole bunch of Grant Cardone videos on how to like sell stuff. Mm-hmm. Made a little script. Went on Google, typed in Realtor Vancouver. Went down the whole list. I literally cold called each and every single one of them, offering my services to take photos of the listing. The listing? Yeah. And within the first year, I was able to like just survive without working at all, just doing strictly that. So that's what I did for the whole year, which was amazing. But then 
at that point, I knew I'm like, dude, I can start selling things. So okay. I wanted to do it a little bit more well, traditionally. Let me go back. What made you think at that point? You're like, why? Because you're already, uh, uh, you're already successful at, at selling yourself to, to those, real, is it realtors? Realtors, yeah, uh, 100%. So you're selling the product that, you know, you're good at photography and you can, you know, make their job easier by giving them those nice pictures. So they're, oh, they're yeah. Cause you know, like, they the, like, like the biggest thing I noticed was like a lot of realtors would take full, uh, like take photos of the listings with just their smartphone. And yeah. back in like 2012 to 2016, around that time, smartphones weren't that great. No, I mean, right. So it'd be grainy. It looked like it was taken with a calculator yeah. and all that. It was horrible. Yeah. It was the worst. Right. So knowing me, I know, I knew that I could take pictures way better than whoever else was offering that service at that time. So once I started getting my foot wet, my my, foot wet, <laughs> my feet wet, you know, in the in, in, in the yeah, cut, in the in, in that whole industry, uh -huh. I knew that I was able to just keep going with it, right? Yep. Of course, there was a lot of people that said no. Why are you calling? I'm not interested. Whatever. That's normal with sales, right? But at the time, I'm like, no one wants to buy this stuff. Is this is this is this a thing, yeah, right? But like that, those are just the normal things that anyone goes yeah. through when they first start in sales. Like what you experience, yeah. you know, a walk in <laughs> would be a walk out with nothing. <laughs> that, that was your uh, uh, high risk, no reward. Exactly. Moment. That, yeah. that, that was that was literally it. Right? That was a high risk, no reward. But in that time, like I remember, I had my one of my best friends at the time. He was he was there with me, listening to me cold call. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was the second or third realtor that I called said yes to a hundred bucks. Taking photos of their listing for a hundred bucks. I'm like, dude, it was that easy. Yeah. So I kept going on and on and on and on and on. Um, after that, I was like, dude, I want to actually make this a, an actual job and like actually put something on my resume. Uh -huh. Right. So I started, uh, started selling e-liquid. You know what that is? E-liquid. Yeah, so for like your e-cigarette. Okay, like the the for the vape, the cartridges, the, the vapes, cartridges. exactly. Like the like the juice you would put in yeah. your, your e-cigarette. I started selling that, became very successful with it, and this is around like 2016. Mm -hmm. Became very successful with it. Our juice was literally in every shop all across Canada. It was amazing, right? Then from there, this is around I would say 2018, 2019. The industry started slowing down. I noticed my commission checks getting lower and lower and lower. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, I want to get into something different. Just try something completely new, yep. right? And then that's when I found the company that we are at with today, yep. selling heavy equipment. Okay. And uh, one of my best friends introduced me to um, to that role, and here I am now. That was a journey, man. It was a, it was a weird ass journey. It's, but if you, if, I mean, now that we heard what your experience, uh, like we heard what you went through, it's pretty much the same. It's yeah. Just different. You know, just different way of experiencing that is, and that's what it is. I mean, for you, it sounds like you learned because, um, because of those rejections, because of those, yeah. I know it's a, for a lot of people, it's fear, but you're going to go through it. Exactly. Um, and what I always tell, or what I was telling myself is you're going to get a lot of no's, but what that does is just makes that yes so much better. Right? So much more rewarding. Hearing that okay, let's do it, right? Right. After that, because you're just expecting like eight no's, right? And your ninth and then, but your 10th, you're like, you know what? Let's do it. And that exactly. just makes it, uh, it's, it's the most rewarding feeling. Right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And like, it's, it's it's all about like, just being consistent with it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, I always compare like with going to the gym. Yeah. Right? Like you can't just go to the gym once and expect to have a six pack. Nope. You know, and that's the same with sales. Like you can't just show up to work, make two phone calls, they all say no and just call it a day. It's not, it's not going to be good for you, right? You have to be very consistent. You have to be persistent as well because mm -hmm. if you just hear the no once, it could just be no to a variety of things. Yep. Number one, the price. It could be the terms, yep. whatever it may be. So you always have to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper into it and just have a conversation with them, right? It's not rocket science no. right? to sell anything. No. In any sales job, it's always going to be the same thing. There's always going to be the same objections whether it's going to be Number one, I need to talk to my wife. I don't have time right now. Mm -hmm. It could be the price or terms. Oh, the price. And you just have to figure out how to handle them. Yeah. And it's very job specific. Yep. Right? And you're right. Yeah. And it's, it's maybe, you know, selling a car or selling the piano right there or selling a mic. <laughs> yeah. It's always going to be the same objections. And as Grant Cardone would say, a lot of those objections are just complaints. Yeah. Right? It's true. The price is too high. Yeah, we know that. 
Of course, that's why you're here. That you saw that on the internet. Yeah. So I know it's prices too high. We we already talked about that, but you need this. You know, you need this piece right here. It'll make you money, or it'll make your life easier. Yeah. Let's do it. Right? It's true. It's true. And um, the one thing about um, sales or, or or like being a sales trainer is that you see a lot of similarities between like. And yeah, we, we spoke about this earlier between the, the, the heavy duty performers mm-hmm. and like the non-performers. Oh yeah. Right. It's like, we can just see it automatically from like within minutes of meeting someone you're like, okay, this person's going to be successful. That person might be, we just have to like yeah. really develop them a little he's bit there, more. He's there, but he's not there. Exactly. Yeah. And then this person right here, who, 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 I don't know how you got hired, <laughs> but God damn. We're, we're, we're in here for a This is so personal minute. right now. Yeah. Right now, right now. <laughs> no, but that, that's just, that, that's just like anywhere at all. Right. And like the big thing is complacency, you know? Yep. With you being in the car sales, you didn't, well, for the first five years, you didn't have the luxury of having a consistent paycheck. No. Right? So you were never comfortable. Nope. Right? You had to, number one, get better. Number two, you had to keep prospecting. Mm-hmm. Number three, you had to close deals, right? And if you weren't doing one of those three, Nothing. buddy, you're not going to be eating. You'll be eating ramen noodles for the rest of your life. That you know? was me, man. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's more than just that, though, right? And we can always tackle about that in a different episode. Uh, that's just more specific on how to actually become successful. That's pretty much it. Uh, you know, talking about you know the downturns of our career. I want to really say it was the the lowest part of our career. It's just that's how we started. Yeah, you um, have to start somewhere, man. You, you, you don't. You never start high. You know, you're always that low, which we were, and then you just keep going so we up. Make and your way up. The beauty of this podcast, and we can always share that journey because it's not done yet. It's not like I'm oh. retiring tomorrow. I would love to. <laughs> right? Can I you join I mean? you, bro? Come on. Um, but that's the beauty of it is we can always, you know, as we go through this whole journey, we can always share what we've uh, experienced and we can always, you know, talk about it and see what we can do better. Exactly. Um, just collaborating together. It's, it, it, it will help not just us, you know, but all our viewers too. Yeah. Um, and that's essentially one of the goals. Yep, uh, all to day. make it easier for them, uh, for us, and you know, for you know, pretty much everyone that's watching, to make it easier for them, not just in in their career, uh, may it be in sales, may it be in retail, anything, anywhere, uh, man, so. anywhere. Because like our experiences together, it's like, you know, we're we're, we're right here, you know. We, but like once we start getting here and here and here and here, we start bringing people on and just uh-huh. hearing about their experiences. Yep. It'll help out. It'll help, it'll help out a whole bunch of people, right? Yeah. People that didn't know they need to hear this. Right, so we just want to share our experiences with y'all. Hope you enjoy enjoyed podcast number uno, one number uno. one <laughs> of the uh, the uno. triple M pod. Yes, sir. Uh, until next time, it's my name is uh, MP Marvy SB Steffi. <laughs> we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Be sure to like, subscribe. Where, where is it? I don't know. You, he's editing that. <laughs> yeah, right. none of it. Yeah, so-